What's up everyone and welcome back to the comps channel. I mentioned in the previous video that I was working on a feature for the BBS and that features the ability to receive JS8 call messages into the system, which widely greatens the range of potential communications. And that's what we're gonna cover in today's video and I hope you join me as we dig into it. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. If you're into ham radio in the digital modes, you'd likely already know what JS8 Call is, but for those of you who aren't, in short, JS8 Call is an application for sending text messages back and forth using ham radio that works well for weak signal communication. Where it really shines is on the HF frequencies, where line of sight isn't an issue because these frequencies can bounce off the ionosphere and allow for communication hundreds and even thousands of miles away. To show you what I mean, we can go over to the PSK report or website and pick a station, then see how far away they're picking up other stations. So where does this come into play with the BBS and Meshtastic? This integration is largely inspired by S2 Underground's GhostNet. I know a number of you are already probably familiar, but for those of you who aren't, GhostNet is a communications network and communications plan to allow for data exchange using your own infrastructure in the event that normal communications like the internet go down and are not available. Now, I won't go in depth as S2 Underground already has a number of videos on the GhostNet and a detailed PDF plan, which I'll include links to in the video description below if you'd like to learn more. But my goal with this here is to enable people who aren't going to get their ham radio license to be able able to retrieve information from GS8 call, assuming a member of your group on the mesh running the BBS does have the capability to provide GS8 call messages. While I would love for everyone to get their licenses, there will always be some who are unable to take the time to get a ham radio license, purchase equipment, and learn how to use both the equipment and software. This gives them the opportunity to be able to receive information using a cell phone that they likely already have and some inexpensive Meshtastic hardware. For an example usage of this JS8 call to Meshtastic integration, we'll take a look at GhostNet's JS8 call section of the comms plan. But you could of course use this with your own network and comms plan as well. Now JS8 call gives you the ability to have call sign groups which we can see some examples in the plan here, like at GhostNet for routine messages and at GST Flash for emergency traffic. The config.ini file in the BBS has a JS8 call section where we can put in these groups. To use this capability, we have to uncomment the lines in this section. So first we have the header that will uncomment. Next we have the host, and this will be the IP address of the system running JS8 call and we'll get into what to configure on the JS8 call software side here in a bit. But for this, we just put in the IP address of that system. Then there's the port, which we can leave that as the default of 2442, and the DB file can be left at default as well. Next is the JS8 groups, and this is where we'll enter in the groups that we're interested in. When a message is received for a group that we have listed here, we'll see an option in the BBS to view the messages for the particular groups we've seen messages from. So let's go ahead and enter in the at sign followed by GhostNet for our first one. Now there can be multiple names listed here as well, so let's have another group we're interested in and let's just add at TC2 as an example. Now below that we have store messages. And what this does is make the standard messages that aren't going to a group show up in the BBS. Now this can be a bit noisy and probably best not to have enabled in most cases, but the option is there if you need it. Finally, we have the JS8 urgent list. Now this is also for putting in groups, but messages received with groups listed here will send an alert to the default channel, similar to how the urgent board does. So for this, we're just gonna put in at GST flash. And that's all you need to do to configure things on the BBS side. Let's go ahead and move on to the JS8 call side now. I'm not going to go into how to completely set up JS8 call in this video as there's already a number of videos out there to do that. Uh, S2 Underground also has a video for setting up JS8 call for receive only, which you don't need a license for in case you're not a ham radio operator and also want to provide this capability to the BBS. I'll also include a link to that video in the description as well. 
So assuming you're already up and running with JS8 call, all you need to do to configure it to make it available to the BBS is go into File, Settings, Reporting, and then you'll see an API section. For the TCP server host name, if the BBS is running on the same system as JS8 call, this can be left as 127.0.0.1. If not, this needs to be changed to whatever the IP address of your system is. You may also need to allow this in the Windows or Linux firewall, depending on your system. The TCP server port can be left as the default of 2442. The TCP max connections can be left as the default of 1, unless you have other systems or tools that need to access the JSA call API. From here, now we just need to hit OK, and that's it. When we start up the BBS, the JS8 call API should be available to it, and we can now receive messages. So let's go ahead and test that out now. So for the purpose of this test, I have a system for sending and another for receiving. You may notice the N0 call at the top. This is usually where your call sign would be. The sending system is set up so that the signals won't leave my location for this test and can only be received by my receiving system. So the first test will be sending a message using the at TC2 group. So I'll send a message with test for YouTube and send that off. And here we have the signal coming into our receiving station and once that text has been received we'll see it in the BBS console as we can see here. And we'll go and do the same for the at ghostnet group that we configured in the BBS as well. So ghostnet test for YouTube and send that. Then here we have that in the console. Now let's go ahead and test the at GST flash group, which is the group that we configured in the BBS for urgent messages. So let's go ahead and put in urgent message test and send that. So here comes that message now, and once that is done sending, we should see it in the BBS console. And then the urgent message notification will be sent out to the group chat to make people aware that an urgent message is available from JS8 call. So to review messages, we just go to the main menu, then send B for BBS, then J for JS8 call. Then here we have the group messages, station messages, and urgent messages. So the group messages are going to be any messages going to the JS8 call group we configured. So let's view that by sending G. Then from here we'll have a numbered list of groups and we can just select the number we're interested in. So let's go ahead and select zero. And here we see the message we sent to the TC2 group on JSA call earlier. All right, now let's go back to group messages, and this time we'll select one for GhostNet. And then here we can see that message we sent to the GhostNet group. Now station messages are just messages not directed toward a group, which we didn't send any of those, so we'll skip that and look at urgent. And then here we can see the urgent test message that we sent. So there you have it. As you can see, we can receive JS8 call messages into the MeshTastic BBS. Now this is currently just one-way communication from JS8 call into MeshTastic since there's potentially going to be non-licensed users on the MeshTastic side who can't legally transmit on ham radio frequencies. 
which is what they would be doing in the other direction. That'll do it for this video. If you found it useful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so, so you don't miss out on upcoming projects. Thank you all and have a good one.